Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be checking out the F2423 from Terra Master. So let's get started. Now I do want to thank Terra Master for sending this over to me for a review and everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. Now I do apologize that I am a little delayed with this video because I actually had this unit on hand for about a month and a half, almost two months now. But that's just because I ran into a little bit of issues trying to get this thing up and running. It all chalked down to more of a user error than it is Terra Master's fault, but I will talk about that experience in a second. Now I gotta say Terra Master has come a long way from what it used to be. Now I've bought one of these units not this one particular because this one just came out but i bought one of these units i think four or five years ago for a client and i mean it works you could throw in hard drives it works it does what it's supposed to which is a nas but from comparing from what i had before to what this unit can do is two completely different things. We've come to the point where NASs can actually be a tiny home server. So specifically these newer ones that are coming out with the newer chipsets and the faster CPUs, you're actually able to virtualize, run dockers and run security agents, backup utilities, like all from one unit. And it has a pretty decent CPU for you to do so. Now playing around with this unit for the past week or two, this can be your home lab or your home server. It's, it's enough power to run what you really need to do. So if you're planning to get involved or get started in home lab uh, NAS is a really good place to start now this is a two bay NAS and what's really special about this one is that it actually has two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet now to talk about the front of the Terra Master it has two bays in front and these are screwless caddies so you don't have to use any screws to install the hard drives in in the front you have your indicators like hard drive LAN power and you also have the power button now in the back is where it gets interesting it has an HDMI, two USB 3s, and two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. And then a pretty decent fan in the back, which is extremely quiet. Now don't get discouraged by the two bays in front. You have two more NVMe slots inside the motherboard. So you're actually capable of running two full hard drives and two NVMe's. Now the CPU itself that it's running is uh, Intel 5150. And I love these CPUs. It just came out last year, 2021 but they're very powerful for what it is. I actually run my main remote desktop computer off a mini PC that runs this CPU with eight gigs RAM. And trust me when I say I run three browsers all the time, tons of software that I'm running in the background as well. And with eight gigs of RAM and Windows 11, it's actually able to handle pretty well. Not only that, the CPU is actually capable of lot. The N5150 runs at two gigahertz, turbo boost to 2.9 and capable of 32 gigs of RAM. Now the unit we have is only four gigs of RAM, but it's upgradable to 32. The GPU that is actually built into this CPU also allows for hardware decoding. So you can actually run Plex off this. And the CPU is also very low power consumption. And here I'm gonna show you a clip of Kilowatt running this guy with two hard drives. And that way at least you could see how much the power consumption is. So when I first got this guy, um, I was running into issues uh, with the 4.2.39 operating system that was on here, which is the TOS or the Terra Master OS. Uh, when I first boot, I wasn't able to get certain things working. Applications weren't working. Uh, the network interface was all messed up. There's all a part of user error. So what happened was that when I installed the hard drive, they weren't completely blank. They, I actually pulled them off another NAS, which is from QNAP. When I plugged them in, I, it kind of messed up with all the folders and the naming of the interfaces and all this other stuff that caused this guy to not work properly. So it took me a little bit to figure that out. And again, that was like full user error fault. I should have just wiped out the hard drives before I put something in here. I do highly recommend when you first get this NAS, it comes with 4.2.3 just upgrade to 5.0. It's a completely different operating system. It's so much newer, it works so much better, but it does require a full factory wipe to get from 4.2 to 5.0. So as soon as you get it, just do that. When you first install, it's gonna ask you, do you want standard or easy install or custom? As soon as you hit custom, it'll actually let you upgrade the firmware from there, like first boot before you even get into this guy. So just download the latest firmware, which is the 5.0 for this. And it makes a world of difference in just operating and running the system. Now, like I said earlier, this does run Docker and it runs virtualization. Those are my two main things on running a NAS. Like back then you wouldn't even think about doing this, but it's gotten to a point, like I said, this could run as your little home server. So yes, virtualization, uh, Docker's work. They have their own USB utility where you can actually just plug in something in the USB port and automatically transfer the data into your NAS. 
Uh, they also have backup utilities, antiviruses. So they have their own bunch of utilities. There's also, uh, I'll leave a link down in the description below for third party uh, applications such as Jellyfin or Deluge and all these other programs that you want to install on here. So not only you get their official packages, you can also look up third party packages to install. I'm mainly happy that you're able to install Docker and also Portainer, which allows you guys to use my Pi host template for x86 and you can get even more involved in just running a NAS. Now I did run a transfer test because I'm not running an NVMe on here and just two hard drives. Here is the right and you could see in the beginning it kind of just works at full speed and then it drops off to like about 130 after it pushes about two gigs of space it, it kind of just drops down. For receiving the file it actually receives at full speed for a good one third of the file until it kind of drops off to that point where it's like it doesn't have enough cache to kind of push the file to me. Since we are running on spindles. They're not overly fast, even for 2.5 gigabit. So it wasn't able to saturate the entire connection. So if you are planning to run a large amount of files, like 10 gigabytes or more, I highly recommend installing NVMe as SSD storage cache. And I did run iPref3 and it was able to transfer at full speed 2.5 all the way through. So yeah, it analyzes that it does work properly and I am getting full speed. So in conclusion, if you're looking to get started in your first NAS or some sort of two bay NAS, uh, this is pretty good. It has a pretty good uh, setup for a CPU. The price is definitely decent for what you're getting. And just the sheer amount of stuff that you can run off this because it does support virtualization and dockers, you're gonna be able to get a lot across if you're gonna be utilizing those utilities. One thing I do not recommend, um, TerraMaster, like I said, have their ARM version. I ran one of their ARM versions before, but it is a world of difference between the ARM and the x86. They actually put more time in developing the x86 versus the ARM, so you will realize a huge difference when you're purchasing this. So make sure you are getting the x64 version versus ARM. I know it's a huge price difference, but it is worth the extra bucks. One thing that I'm not too fond about their products is that all their TerraMaster look very similar. Their two bay F2423 versus the ARM version looks almost identical. Like you can't tell the difference. So those are the things that I think they should change. Maybe like change it to white instead of silver or change it to black or something like that. So we know that, hey, when I'm buying something like this, I could just look at it and know that, hey, this is the higher model or the lower model. And that's, that's one thing I wish they would have done. Other than that, uh, I'm very pleased with this. I've been playing with it for about a week and a half. I do have my own NASs in stock, so this is not in line. This is not pushed through my production, but it is able to do everything that I have on my other NASs. So I'm very happy about that. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as saying, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.